fruitful possession. Unchain your mind. Shalom. My name is Brother Jacob Israel. Welcome to Fruit Possession. Tonight we're going to be talking about looking for employment and what type of job that you can actually apply for if you're not like a um, have a college degree or you're just getting out of high school and you're just looking for a trade that you can actually grow in that field. So um, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, what it would be to have a job maybe in the uh, maintenance field. So the first thing we're going to talk about is because it's a different type of maintenance when it comes to uh, maintenance workers. So we're going to talk about the first one now is facilities maintenance technician. So what a facility maintenance technician is, is when you come in as a general maintenance uh, personnel and you learn on the job, all right? And what it, uh, this stuff is, I'm going to give you an overview of it. It says a uh, facilities technician performs a variety of building maintenance work, including some minor electrical, mechanical, plumbing, construction, modification, and repair activities. So when you are a maintenance technician, you're often going to work with other maintenance workers that's been there that's going to actually train you on different aspects of the job. All right. So we're going to continue reading. Um, including some minor electrical, mechanical, plumbing, construction, modification, and repair activities in commercial and residential settings to ensure all locations are maintained in a safe and effective working condition. Because a lot of times when you take a maintenance position, you could be working for a company that works in uh, different buildings. So you might travel from one building to the next. And these are just some of the qualifications that you would need. Like I said, uh, you don't have to be a uh, four-year graduate from a major college, but you can be coming right out of high school. And a lot of the high schools, uh, you actually have classes and that will teach you certain trades that can benefit you in that field if you choose the maintenance area. So we're just gonna read some of the qualifications here. It says, must have a high school diploma, a GED, with at least one year of experience in property maintenance and a general aptitude for all functions of facilities, maintenance including HVAC, HVAC, electrical painting, electrical painting, carpentry, and plumbing, but they demonstrate competency in at least two of these areas. A valid driver's license in the state and a resident is also required. So a lot of times, uh, basically, in certain schools, you can actually receive that training. So that's, that will be considered uh, actually being familiar with what you would need to apply for the position. So say if you went, you was in high school and you was in a vocational program, like for four years, and then you apply for a maintenance position, you actually can write that down and that would benefit you when you actually apply for that job. One of the most important things to know when you actually apply for a position like that is to be honest and upfront with the employer, letting them know that you're willing and you're eager to learn and grow in that position because it is room for growth. Um, you're also gonna have opportunities to learn from contractors that actually come in and perform duties and work within that building because as maintenance workers, you will also um, react with contractors such as plumbers, such as electricians, also painters. Uh, you will have contractors that also may come in and lay carpet. You also may have contractors that um, repair locks. So you're gonna actually get to watch these contractors perform their duties and you can actually learn a lot from them and possibly pick up a uh, trade later on by applying yourself in, you know, performing the same type of tasks that they were doing. And it, it only it also gives you the familiarity to uh, deal with them. So later on down the road, if the opportunity come where they're looking for apprentice, they're where they just want to train someone to grow in their business and they're looking to hire someone, you'd be one of the first ones on that list. So also, you'll get a chance to read floor plans. 
So when you're in certain maintenance positions, you could be in a situation where, <coughs> excuse me, you could be in a situation where uh, you have departments that move in and out of the building. So what happens is they come in and they completely do over the floor area of the department that was in that building. So you'll get a chance to actually learn what it is to read floor plans. You get to have the opportunity to actually read plans for us, looking up knowing where the HVC uh, units are and then top of the building and the ceiling of the buildings and so on. Um, you get a chance to actually see how they actually run the um, electrical outlets, also how they do the plumbing in, in these areas. So that's that's one thing that's also benefit beneficial for you when you do change when you do uh, look for a maintenance position, right? Also, you get a chance to use tools such as hammers, such as drills, screwdrivers, uh, boxing wrenches. Um, you get a chance to do snow removal, so you get a chance to actually work snow machines. Uh, you actually get also get a chance to do uh, landscaping, uh, so you learn how to. Um, not only plant, but you know how to upkeep the landscaping as well as the planting the uh, flowers and so on. Uh, also, you get a chance to react uh, with the tenants. If you work in a building as a maintenance worker and, and you're working with the tenants, a lot of times you can do work with inside their apartment. Like a lot of times uh, you can do paint inside their apartment or like I said, light electrical work, fires, repair thermostats, uh, repair heaters, of course, in a situation like that, you'll be trained by maintenance workers that was already there present to always shut off the power and actually they'll show you how to actually repair or replace uh, a heating core or repair a thermostat. I also, you get a chance to uh, travel from, like I said, to different locations. Not a job that would uh, be boring. Now, it's one thing also about maintenance is it's different type of maintenance and we're gonna look up and, and we're gonna see what different type of maintenance positions that are actually available for uh, brothers that wanna choose that field, all right? So you have uh, certain maintenance positions like, as I stated, maintenance technician, all right? But you also have maintenance mechanic. Maintenance mechanic, we're gonna read a little bit about that and tell you what this job uh, entails. So maintenance mechanics, we're gonna read a little more about that. It says maintain the safe working condition of facility equipment, building and grounds. So when you work in that maintenance field as a maintenance mechanic, you're basically gonna be working on equipment. So you're gonna be doing the regular routine upkeep of the general equipment in that building, all right? It says constructs fixtures as required. So it also could be uh, replacing ceiling tiles uh, in the ceiling. So a lot of times um, they have leaks from the HVC units and you're required to install new tiles in the uh, ceiling. It says perform preventative maintenance and inspections on equipment and schedule. And you do a routine check, which means you will check the filters and make sure that uh, you change the filters on a quarterly time, which is every three months. Uh, also, you'll make any calls on an equipment for HVAC unit repairman if deemed necessary. Uh, also, repair facility equipment fixtures building the grounds, which means you're also in charge of the ground. Right, uh, anything that need to be fixed. Also, like if you gotta re repair, say broken steps, uh, you, you're gonna uh, use a mix of mortar and cement to actually uh, fix and repair any cracks uh, within the building structure. Also, it says remove and, remove and or install fixtures and equipment for safe, efficient operation. Troubleshoot electrical, hydraulic, pneumatic, and mechanical systems to determine causes of failures and recommend solutions for repair. Which means when you are general maintenance, anything that you can't repair, the company also outsourced to contractors as I was speaking before. So it's a field where basically it's room for growth. And once again, the requirements and qualifications is that you have a high school diploma, uh, equivalent or a completion of techno school or eloquent and training experience in education, which means 
like I said, if you were in a high school that you had vocational training within that school where you actually did that, uh, that would be considered if you apply for that job. Uh, another thing that's important is teamwork when you choose a job in the maintenance field. Now, as repentant Israelites, like to go in the Bible, we're going to read the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, because you know um, work is something that is required here in our captivity because we broke God's law. So we're just going to read the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 in the word of God. It said, in the sweat of thy face. So this is God talking to Adam after even Adam committed sin in the garden. All right. Verse 19, book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return into the ground, for out of it was take, thou taken, for thus thou art, and to thus shalt thou return. So when we broke God's laws as the nation of Israel, that put us in a situation where we would have to work. So it's our responsibility to provide for our house and ourselves, because when we come together in union, because we know marriage is honorable, we want to be able to provide for our family. Uh, I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 also. So the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 in the word of God. But if any man provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he had to deny the faith and is worse than an infidel, which means an unbeliever. Un un unbeliever. Because God tells us to what? Take care of our house. As he said, if a man cannot rule his house, how can he rule the kingdom of heaven? So it's our job always to provide for our family. So it's important. So this is just one field, as brothers, that you can uh, actually look into. And like I said, it's different aspects and, and different positions that you can um, see in the maintenance field. So let's read verse 8 again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own. So you want to be able to provide for your own self. Because a lot of times we come into the understanding of the truth and we're seeking a wife to get married. We have to be able to provide for ourselves as well as our wife when we come together in a union. And especially for those of his own house. He had to deny the faith and it's worse than an infidel. So that means we would be an unbeliever because it's important as a man to be able to take care of his family. Of course, we know uh, sisters also work also. So here, a lot of times, both the man and the woman works, but the man is the head of the house, and he should be able to provide for his family. Let's go to the book of First Timothy, chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 5. Book of First Timothy, chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, so how do we rule our house, our own house? By keeping the word of God, by providing for our house, by going into an occupation where if we don't have a degree, we can seek occupation for far as like maintenance where there's room for growth. And you're going to learn and you can bring also that talent back and help the nation of Israel, help your people. Let's read verse Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, verse 5 again. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Because as we learn, as we seek employment and we work, we also can bring that same work ethic back into what? Helping our people, helping our community and righteousness. So it's very important for us to be able to do that. So once again, uh, I was just going over, if you're seeking employment, uh, maintenance is a field where it's room for growth. And here at Fruitful Possession, we always strive to teach our people according to the Bible and things that's going to benefit us as a nation. So, like I always say, this is not a competition, this is a mission. And with that, I'd like to say all praises to the Most High. Shalom. Most High in Christ bless. Fruitful possession. I'm Chain your mind. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 20 and 21. And thou hast got a fruitful possession through all the field, 
sow it with thy own seed, trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Verse 21, so thy race which thou leavest shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good decent. Christ is black. Unchain your mind. Shalom. My name is Brother Jake Vivian. Welcome to Unchain Your Mind. Christ is black. Z-Z-Y. Oh! Don't you never do nothing like that again. No reading, no writing. Never ever, you hear me? White folks know a nigga can read and write. They see to it that nigga be worse than whipped. That nigga be sold. Yeah. Israelites never forget. The children. so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's time to unchain your mind. Price is black. Price is black. Never forget. Yeah. Welcome to Unchain Your Mind because you know it's time. We're going to show you and you'll find in the Bible that the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God chosen people. So come back and fact, repent. It's like that. Unchain Your Mind. What's your name?